we'll talk about the time value of money so uh, this is a uh, second chapter for cfa level 1 examination so what is time value of money so suppose if you have 10000 uh, dollars right now and uh, you put it into the bank and you get 11000 uh, after uh, one year then you will call that you gain some interest on your 10000 and that is equal to 1000 so if you take 1000 and divide it by 10000 so that will be equal to 10% so you will say that your rate uh, of interest is equal to 10% same way if suppose uh, you are about to get uh, 10,000 uh, after one year and now you need that money right now so instead of waiting for one year you want that money right now so you will say um, let give me 9,000 so in this case because you lose 1,000 instead of getting 10,000 you are willing to take 9,000 so we will say that 1,000 divided by and then in this case I will divide it by the future value so that is 10,000 so if I say 10,000 so that will be again equal to 10% so in this case the discount rate is equal to 10 percent so uh, i took uh, this example because it was easier for me to calculate 1000 divided by 10,000. however if you look again into this suppose if you have a, a amount called hmm, p and then after one year it will be p into 1 plus r where r is equal to rate of interest divided by 100 so suppose if uh, if uh, r is equal to 0 0.1 or 10 percent then uh, 1 plus r is equal to 1.1 right so this is your uh, future value but if you want to discount it then you have to multiply this future value by discount rate and that will be equal to 1 minus d and then it should be equal to p so p is equal to p into 1 plus r this is the future value and then this is your future value and then you discount it back to go back to the present value so if you in this case now you can uh, cancel out the p so you left with 1 plus r is equal to 1 minus d so this is our relationship between discount rate and the interest rate uh, so this is uh, one of the very easy uh, question which can show up in the exam and uh, you have to uh, remember this formula if you don't remember you can also just memorize it go to the future value and then discount it back and that will be equal to your uh, present value and uh, then uh, you can come up with this formula so uh, so if uh, for example so you please remember that r is not equal to d so it's not equal to d so if your uh, r uh, is equal to uh, one point uh, like if, if r is equal to 10 percent or equal to 0 0.1 uh, then in this case we will have 1 divided by 1.1 is equal to 1 minus d and your d will be equal to uh, 1 minus 1 divided by 1.1 or equal to 0 0.1 divided by uh, 1.1 or equal to 1 by 11 so so r or d is different than r so d because r was equal to 1 by 10 so this is 1 by 11 so r and d are slightly different and they are not equal uh, in this case so now there is some another term which is called opportunity cost so opportunity cost uh, is uh, another term it is used in financial world but it basically means the same thing as r so opportunity cost means suppose if you have 
nine thousand uh, dollars with you, and uh, you can you have two options: you spend it or you put it in the bank. So if you spend it, then you lose the interest. So you will lose interest. And if you lose the interest, then that is called uh, your opportunity cost. So the amount of interest which is lost by you, because instead of spending, you could have put that in the bank. And if you put that in the bank, you would have gained the interest. So now you are spending it. That means you are losing the interest. So this is called opportunity cost. So loss of interest is equal to. cost so suppose this would have been uh, 10,000 after one year so we will call uh, is equal to 1,000 here so because we lost 1,000 and uh, another way to look at the opportunity cost is suppose you borrow from the bank to start a project and then the amount of interest you give to bank for starting your project so you, for starting a project you lose some interest because you are borrowing that money so that amount of interest which you lose to the bank can also be term as opportunity cost so borrow borrow from bank so interest paid to bank is equal to opportunity cost so so this is lesson one and then uh, look forward to my next video uh, we will talk more about the interest rates and discount rates and how to do some calculations thank you uh, hi everyone uh, in this video we will talk about capital budgeting process so if a company has two different projects and they need to make a decision about the profitability of one project versus other so what is the systematic way to go for it so there are two approaches one is uh, net present value and the other approach is IRR which is internal rate of return so uh, suppose now we have a company uh, which uh, has a project uh, with the initial uh, investment of one thousand dollars and then um, after uh, uh, one year this company will result in a cash flow of five hundred dollars and then the second year it will have a cash flow of again a five hundred dollars and then third year again it will have a cash of flow of $500 so this is first year this is second year and this is third year so uh, what we'll do is we will look at the cost of the capital so cost of capital is that how much uh, does it take for company to borrow the money so borrow the money or get it from the investor so for example uh, if uh, uh, I'm talking about a project in which I'm taking all the thousand dollar from a bank and then bank is charging me 10 percent interest so i will say that my cost of capital is 10 uh, percent and uh, if i'm i have a partner and i have to give him a five percent interest rate uh, for uh, or he expect five percent uh, return uh, on his uh, money he invested then i will say the cost of capital is five percent so suppose uh, my cost uh, uh, of capital uh, is equal to R so in this case uh, I will calculate the net present value of the future cash flows so net present value will be equal to so my first cash flow will be of $500 so I will divide it by 1 plus R so this will give me the present value of that $500 which will come after one year and then after two years, I can say one by R whole square. 
and then for third year I will say 500 divided by 1 plus R okay. so this will be my net present value for the, uh, the for the investment I have made in the beginning so based on that suppose if this net present value uh, is uh, uh, suppose uh, now let's assume R is equal to 0 so if I assume R is equal to 0 in this case the net present value will be $1500 so uh, based on uh, this uh, amount I can say that uh, I have invested $1000 and it gave me back $1500 uh, after the completion of the project so the net present value is $1500 for that $1000 I invested so my total profit will be $500 so I think this project is beneficial so I should go for this project now the second approach same uh, uh, like the second approach in this case will be the IRR so in case of IRR uh, instead of using the uh, 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 cost of capital I will calculate uh, like how much percentage of return did I get on my investment so in this case I will equate my initial investment which is of thousand dollar and I will equate it to 500 divided by 1 plus R plus 500 divided by 1 plus R square plus 500 divided by 1 plus R cube and then I will use a financial calculator to calculate the value of R and then suppose uh, uh, so let's call it R dash because this is a uh, internal rate of return so I'll call it R dash and then R is my cost of capital so now in this case I can compare R versus R dash and then if R is less than R dash then I should take the project and if R is greater than R dash then I will not take this project so there are two different approaches uh, which can be used to consider a project so we have IRR and a net present value so each method has its own uh, advantage and disadvantage so for example uh, if I have an investment is equal to hundred dollars and then I'm uh, the net present value of the project is equal to fifty dollars then I'll say that okay uh, it's a good uh, project because I'm investing hundred dollars and I will be making fifty dollars out of it but if so I will say this is a good project but if the investment is equal to one million dollars and then my net present value is equal to fifty dollars then in this case I will not invest one million dollar to just get a profit of fifty dollars so I will not take this project so the the problem with the net present value method is that if we just compare two projects with the net present value I will not be able to differentiate between the two projects and both of the projects will look similar to me according to net present value approach so therefore uh, the another uh, way to go for it is a IRR in which you get the total rate of return and that is uh, the another approach I hope this tutorial will help thank you uh, hi everyone in this tutorial we will talk about some of the terms which are used in capital budgeting processes uh, for example uh, one of the term is uh, payback period so uh, this is so what is payback period so suppose if you have an investment of uh, $1000 and you have a cash flow of uh, $500 $200 
and then uh, in the end you have again six hundred dollars so how will you calculate the payback period so payback period is amount of years on how many years it will take to get your initial investment of thousand dollars back so this is here first second year and this is third year so how will you go for it is so you will calculate how much uh, amount you have left in your investment so in this case so if you get five hundred dollars after one year so your amount left from initial investment will be five hundred dollars and then uh, for second year your investment will be three hundred dollars left and for third year you're getting six hundred dollars so you will get three hundred dollars more than your investment however to calculate the payback period what you have to do is you have to calculate this as one this as one and then because you are getting six hundred dollars uh, investment so uh, oh, six hundred dollar of cash flow and you only needed three hundred to get uh, all your money back so you, you will use this as half of a year so your total payback period will be 2.5 years uh, now the second uh, definition is the discounted payback period so uh, this is discounted payback So in case of discounted payback, mm -hmm. um, we will use the same um, case, like we have $1,000 investment and then we have 500, uh, 200 and 300 uh, money coming back in next three years. So, um, so how will we go for it in this case? instead of using uh, just adding the amount of money you're getting back we will discount it to net present value so what is the net present value of 500 so suppose our rate of interest is 10 percent so our uh, discounted uh, uh, value of 500 dollars after one year will be 500 divided by 1.1 and then for the second year it will be 200 divided by 1.1 square and for third year it will be 300 divided by 1.1 cube so that is the amount of or that is the present value of your future cash flows and then we will calculate the present value so now uh, please remember that uh, if you have to compare the discounted uh, payback period versus the regular payback period then which would be the greater number so because we are discounting discounting the money to the present value so discounted payback period will always be greater than regular payback period So uh, you need to remember that. So that is one of the definition which is uh, important uh, in capital budgeting process. And uh, the second definition is the profitability index. So what is profitability index? So profitability uh, index is uh, your uh, it's pretty easy it's uh, equal to your future cash flows so present value of future cash flows divided by your current cash flow so so if you're if, if you're um, in the same example it would have been like this so it's 500 divided by 1.1 plus uh, 200 divided by 1.1 whole square plus 300 divided by 1.1 whole cube and all divided by 1000. So that will be equal to your profitability. Hi everyone, in, in this tutorial we will talk about the bonds. So what is the bond? Um, 
so normally you you might have heard that people buy bonds and this is a safe way of investment so what basically you are doing when you buy a bond so when you buy a bond you are actually giving a loan to the person who is issuing issuing you the bond for for example government like so government wants money so they they give you bonds so so you take uh like uh, a buyer so buyer will get bond so they will give them bond and the buyer will give them money and this money uh, so government get the money and then they will return you the money plus interest right so this is how the bond is so if so you give the money to the bank and then you get uh, money plus interest so however this is different from just depositing your money in the bank so why it is different so let's take an example so suppose uh, you want to buy a one year bond so one one year bond so this is a very simple example so in case of one year bond suppose the market interest is equal to 10% so what so the bond is always defined by the face value and that is usually considered as $100 so let's take the face value so face value is equal to $100 right so what does this means that after one year because you are buying a one year bond so after one year so this is your one year so after one year you will get hundred dollars and because the interest rate is right now uh, 10 percent so what should you pay for this uh, hundred dollars right now so that will be equal to hundred divided by 1.1 so why 1.1 because if you add uh, interest to 100 divided by 1.1 so that will be equal to so that will be because you are uh, getting an interest of 10 percent so you know that 10 percent divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.1 and then you have a principal of 1 so that will be equal to 1.1 so if you take uh, 100 uh, right by 1.1 is to multiply by 1 by 1 so you will get 100 again so that's it this is why so if you have to um, uh, get hundred dollars after one year so you will pay 100 divided by 1.1 today and then you will get hundred dollars after one year however how it is different from the bank because in the bank also you will deposit hundred and uh, divided by 1.1 you will get 10 percent interest and after one year that will be equal to 100 so in that terms it is same but suppose if the interest rate changes now let's take another example so so now the interest rate is uh, so you you so not, not, let's throw that line again so this is your hundred dollars and then you paid hundred divided by 1.1 right uh, so now the interest is uh, interest is 10 percent that's why you pay that and now after next day like after within one day your interest rate is now five percent so what happened if interest rate is five percent so the same bond which was selling for um, 100 divided by 1.1 now will be selling for 100 divided by 1.05 why because now the interest rate is five percent so what you can do is you the bond you already bought for 100 divided by 1.1 now you can sell it for 100 divided by 1.05 so sell right so so your profit will be 100 divided by 1.05 minus 100 divided by 1.1 so you make uh, approximately 5% uh, profit within 
one day so now this is uh, so you make so you make a profit right so so this bond allows huge profits uh, i like huge profit means as you compare it to the interest uh, it's not like you compare it to stocks or something but the bond the bond give you allows you huge profits but same times bonds can depreciate a lot if the interest rate would have gone from 10% to 20% then the bond value would have decreased but still you do not have lost the money because if you keep or stick with the bond then eventually after one year you will get your return return however the only problem is that if the interest rate would have increased instead of getting the 10 uh, the increased return you would get only the return for which you buy the bond so they are same time safe so I hope this tutorial will help and yeah, we will talk more In this more tutorial, about... I will talk about the capital budgeting. Uh, I was preparing for CFA level 1 exam and I thought that I should share some of the concept I learned during the preparation. So we are talking about capital budgeting. So which is... So for a company, uh, there is always a need of capital so that company can undertake the new projects. And uh, they can generate money or capital from three different sources one of the source is from the bank so when they take the money from the bank we call it debt and the good thing about debt is that when you file the income tax then there is no income tax on the debt or you can file for deduction on the income taxes in the amount of the interest you have paid so if we talk about how much does it cost so suppose if bank is charging us 10% interest rate and the corporate tax is uh, the 40% then uh, we will be actually uh, uh, saving 40% on the interest we have paid so therefore the, the total amount of uh, uh, cost for that will be 10% minus 1 minus 0.4 or only the 60 percent of it so so we can say that the the cost of the debt was only six percent because 40 percent is saved on the interest we paid in the tax in the form of taxes now the other source of capital so this was first source of capital the other source of capital is the preferred stock preferred uh, stocks yes so what is preferred stock so suppose if we if a company needs a large amount of money and uh, they want it to uh, so they can go to a, a wealthy person and then tell that person or a company that uh, if you buy our stock we will give you a 5% or a 10% or a particular amount of percentage of dividend every year and uh, the, the company may not be paying this dividend to everyone but especially to that uh, person or the company because they wanted to generate a large amount of cash and they don't have any other option so in that case how does we calculate the cost of the preferred stocks so suppose if uh, the company stock is uh, 50 dollars and they are paying so this is the price of the stock And then they are paying $5 as a dividend. So in that case, we will say it's a 10%. So the cost of the capital through preferred stock was 10%. And the third way to generate money is through equity. So we call it equity. So what is equity? Equity is the investment by the owner. So suppose if you are the owner of the company and you want to start a project you are not able to raise money from somewhere else or you have money to invest in the company so you can put your own capital and that will be considered as an equity or you can find another partner 
who is able to invest in your company and then you will also call that equity or otherwise you can issue some new stocks in the market then if you issue new stocks they will also be kind of a partner or the owner of the company partial owner of the company and that money which is coming from the common stocks is also called as equity so how does we calculate the cost of the equity so the the way to calculate the cost of the equity is the expected return so suppose if you are the owner and you want to invest in the company you say that oh at least i want a 5% return on my investment otherwise i won't be investing so based on your expectation you call that the the rate of the equity suppose <clears throat> you want to calculate what is the total cost of capital we have so the total cost of capital will be equal to uh, so what we did this before is uh, we had 10% from debt and we multiply it by 1 minus uh, 0 0.4 then we have 10% uh, from profit stocks and then we have 5% from equity right and now suppose we are generating 10 millions from debt and uh, um, 20 million from uh, preferred stock and uh, 10 million from equity so in this case what we'll do is we multiply them by 10 multiply this by 20 and multiply this by 10 and then divide everything by uh, the sum which is 40 so that will be equal to uh, 6 into 10 plus 10 into 20 plus 5 into 10 divided by 40 so that will be my cost of capital so now let's go to the uh, the company uh, companies uh, uh, decision making for whether to take the project or not so now we know that how much is the cost of the capital to the company and now suppose the uh, company uh, look at the projects so they could be uh, different projects that company can take for example project one so project one says that let's invest one million dollar to uh, today so which has a negative cash flow of 1 million and then you will get for next 10 years a cash flow of 0.2 million so after one year you will get 2 million after two years you will get 2 millions and after same way after 10 years you will get 0.2 million so what can company do so so company can look at this project in two different ways one is that it can use its cost of capital so suppose cost of capital is uh, r or the or the answer from the top from this is uh, is uh, r then what we can do is we can calculate the value present value of all this future cash flow so we can do is we say minus 1 million and then plus 0 0.2 million divided by 1 plus r and then plus 0 0.2 million 1 plus r square and plus so on and then 0 0.2 million divided by 1 plus r is to power 10 and we can calculate what is the net present value so this will give us the net present value of the project the other way to so if if your net present value is positive then you will you should go for the project because you are making a money and if the net present value is less than zero then you should not take the project because it's not good for uh, the company because you will lose the money in that case 
the other way to look at the project is the internal rate of return so in this case instead of using r uh, from the cost of capital we equate net present value equal to zero and then calculate r so we calculate what is the rate of the return so suppose so let's let's go back here and uh, we, we can we can we can calculate this so this was 60 uh, 60 plus uh, 200 260 310 so it, it is 310 divided by 40 which is approximately equal to 4728 and 4728 and 70 so it's approximately 7.7 uh, percent right and then we can come back here and sub calculate the R here. So if R is greater than 7.7 percent, it's greater than 7. So the project is good. And if R is less than 7.7 percent, then the project is bad. We should not take the project. So this is the another way to calculate the uh, the the or evaluate the project. So sometimes if the company is comparing the two projects, it can have a contradictory results uh, for net present value and the internal rate of return. Sometimes the net present value, suppose uh, if you have a, a project which is like, suppose now we calculate net uh, present value, right? So suppose, it, so, so suppose you have a project one. So project one will give you a cash flow of uh, 100 millions. So you invest 100 millions and then you get uh, 20 million each for next year's right? So so you invest 100 and then you get 20 each for next years. And th there's another project, project two, which gives you uh, which requires a cash flow of uh, uh, 1 million and then give you a return of uh, 0 0.2 million. Right? So in this case, the net present value will be higher for, so net present value is for project 1 is greater than net present value net present value for project 2 so but irr should be same so should we take a uh, decision based on irr or net so so in this case we will take the uh, decision based on the net of present value however if instead of uh, 0.2 if the return in this project would have been uh, 0 0.19 and 0 0.19 so in this case the ir or, or not 0 0.1 but like let's take it 2.1 so like 2.1 and 2.1 so in that case the irr would have been like this so ir for project 2 would have been greater than project 1 so in this case we have a contradictory result because the net present value of project 1 is greater than project 2 but the irr is less than for project 1 is less than project 2 so where what should company do the company should take a decision uh, towards the uh, like for the better net present value so net present value is preferred when it comes to the choice of the project between two of them but they are giving the contradictory results based on IRR and net present value now uh, let's look at the opportunity curve so now suppose this is the curve and this is the capital so now if the company wants to generate the capital so this is your cost of capital so as you know that if the company wants to generate just like small amount of money then it can just go to the bank and bank will give them the loan and that will not cost much to the company or they can issue some stocks but as they try to 
get more and more debt then the bank will be more cautious and then because of that they will increase the interest rate or they might have to go to some secondary sources which can have a higher cost uh, or the higher interest rates so first of all like suppose like i can give you an example like suppose if you have if you want to get a debt and you have bank one and bank two and bank three right so if you if you want to take loan from bank one it give you four percent interest and bank two give five percent and bank give six percent and uh, it can give you 1 million this can give you 2 million this can give you 1 million so when you want to generate your first 1 million you will go to bank one and you get your cost will be four percent but now if you so now if you want to generate uh, one additional million then you won't go to bank three but you go to bank two because bank f bank one is not giving you any more uh, loan right so let's write it million so uh, so you so your cost of capital will increase so for first million one million cost of capital is four percent when you get two million the cost of capital will be now 4.5 percent because you're paying four percent to this and five percent to bank two so this is how your uh, project or the cost of capital will increase so you so you can see that as you as you go on increasing the capital your cost of capital so, so your curve will look something like this so your cost of capital will increase and same way if you look at the project so suppose you have project one project two project three and the project one will give you 20 percent uh, project two will give you 15 percent and project 3 will give you 10 percent so for sure you will first if you your first preference will be project 1 so you will apply your your add your money to project 1 so you will start so so your first uh, investment will be here and then as you try to invest more and more your choices for good projects will go down and you have uh, you will left with the projects which provide you lower returns so slowly your your uh, your schedule for investment so this is your schedule schedule for investment and this is your cost of capital so your schedule for investment will go down and your cost of capital will go up so at what point you should stop investing so you should stop investing at this point where your cost of capital starts to be more than your return on the projects so you should at the company should be always be try to reach this point where they can or generate the additional capital for the projects uh, which will be providing more return than the cost of the capital and uh, and the money uh, which is uh, required to or the total money which is um, used at this point is called the capital uh, target or the capital which a company generates for for it to go for the so same way uh, so you can see that if the if the um, interest rates uh, are decreased or the money supply has been increased in a country then obviously your cost of capital curve will go down and you will be able to take more projects and that will somehow simulate the economy so this is uh, was few of the things which i learned in the cfa and uh, we can we can talk about more in the next videos so thank you uh, hi everyone in this tutorial uh, i will explain you what is a call option and what is a put option so basically the idea of call and put option so you have to remember first that this is an option so this is not an obligation for you so if you buy them this is only an option for you 
but if you sell them then it's an obligation for you so let me give you an example so suppose uh, we have a stock and the price is dollar uh, ten for it and we buy a call option and the strike uh, so the strike price for it is is equal to dollar eleven and the price is equal to dollar one so what does it mean it means that you can buy the stock at price eleven in the future until the call option expires so suppose the call option expires in like uh, two months so these are the three things you will get when you buy a call what is the strike price what is the price and what is the expiry so the call option will give you the ability to buy the stock at price 11 in next two months if the price doesn't reach 11 then you will not so if the stock price is below 11 in next two months then you will not be buying the stock at price 11 so you will lose the price you paid to get this call so that will be dollar one and if you uh, if the stock price goes above 11 then you will always want it want to buy uh, call, uh, the stock at 11 and then whatever the price difference is that will be your profit so let's uh, look at the graph here so if i look at the graph so this is my stock price and this is the value of call option then in this case i will see something like this and this point will be 11 so if it's below 11 then there is no value and if the stock price goes above 11 then the value will increase and that will be equal to the price whatever it's above 11 so suppose if it reaches 20 here then this would be the total would be 9 so you will your value will also be 9 so this will be equal to so this will be equal to 9 so your so your uh, value of the call option will be $9 now if you look at the profit so this is your profit from buying the stock buying the call option so in this case so suppose if the stock so this is your stock price again and if the stock price is below 11 then uh, below 10 suppose example so in that case uh, you will not be using your call option and you will lose your one dollar so you you will always have a loss of one dollar until it reaches uh, 11 and when it reaches 11 then your profit will start to increase however you will break even at 12 dollars because at 12 dollar your call option will be so suppose s is equal to 12 so your call will be equal to dollar one and because you paid dollar uh, one so your total profit will be equal to zero at this stage so this will be your point 12 here and this is 11 and then you will see the profit so you will see and this is equal to minus one so you will see that at 12 you will begin to have a profit from the call option otherwise you will not gain any money uh, similarly if you look at the put option so the put option is different the put option will allow you to sell the stock uh, at the given strike price so for example let's take the same thing the stock price is dollar 10 and uh, the strike price which is k is equal to uh, 11 and uh, price is equal to dollar 2 now in this case you will be able to sell the stock at price 11 in the next two months so expiry is equal to two months right so what will happen is uh, so if you draw the chart here and this is your value of put option so what will happen so when you are above 11 
then you so if the stock price is so suppose this is 11 so if you are above 11 then you will never sell your stock at 11 price right so you will net not get get any money out of it but if it's below 11 then the value of the put will increase so in this case suppose it reaches uh, now one dollar or let's say five dollar so in this case the difference will be six dollars so that will be your six dollars so and then it will go same way so you can see that as you uh, buy the put option then uh, your profit will increase when stock will fall and uh, if you draw the profit diagram so in this case uh, as you did before so this is your profit so you will start with negative two because you pay two dollars so if the stock price is very high you will have a loss of two dollars and then when it reaches 11 then you will start to get the profit and then because you paid two dollars so again uh, so when the price will be equal to nine dollars then your uh, value of put will be equal to two dollars and because you paid two dollars so therefore your profit is equal to zero so here because uh, so at nine so this is your nine and this is your uh, 11 and at nine you will start to get the profit so you can see the profit goes up so this is how your uh, profit diagram will look or profit plot will look like and this is your two this is uh, your profit uh, will look like if you buy a put option so one more thing to consider here is the maximum profit so the maximum profit for put option will be equal to so because you bought it for 11 so the maximum profit is dollar dollar 11 minus dollar 2 so that will be equal to dollar 9 so you if you think about it so the maximum what can happen is the stock can become zero and if the stock becomes zero you will your option will be worth $11 and then because you pay $2 so the maximum profit will be $9 and in case of uh, call option so this is your uh, put option but if you have a call option uh, and we take the previous example same thing so you have a strike price of 11 and you paid uh, $1 for it however in this case the the stock price is uh, can go up and there is no limitation to it stock price can go thousand ten thousand or anything so this so the profit is unlimited so maximum profit is equal to unlimited uh, for call and this is for put maximum profit for put is limited and for call is unlimited so now uh, in the next tutorial i will tell you how you can buy stocks and uh, um, and combine other options to make a synthetic call or synthetic put and then how can you look at the anomalies in the market to get some profits out so i hope this tutorial help i will see you again thanks bye hi everyone in this tutorial we will talk about call put parity in last tutorial we discussed what is a call option and what is a put option but let's give let me give you a small uh, introduction to call and put option before we go to call and put parity and that will also help me explain the call and put parity if i explain you what is a call and what is put so let's take about the talk about the call option so if you have a call option that give us the ability to buy a stock at a given price so let's we define the price to be k so here what happen is so this is your value so your value will increase 
only when the stock price so this this uh, x axis is a stock price and the y axis is the value of the call and we call it call so what happen is that it gives you the ability to buy the stock at price k so if it's below the value of k then you will uh, the well the call option is worthless but if it's above the value of k then you will make uh, money or the value to the call option will come and that will be equal to the uh, difference between the stock price and the strike price and if you look at the put then uh, the put gives you the ability to sell the ability to sell the stock at a given strike price so here if you look at the value of put then uh, you will see that the value increases as the stock price decreases and this is your k so um, now if we combine call and put together so what will happen so let's say that you buy so buy the call and sell put so in this case if we combine both of them together we'll see something like this so this is your k so so we bought, bought the call so we will make money as it goes above the strike price of k and because we sold the uh, put so we will lose the money as it goes below the strike price k so this is your s and this is value so this is value of buy call and sell put so now if you look at this uh, chart carefully this is equivalent to buy stock at price k so so this is obvious right because uh, your value increases um, when you um, then the stock price goes up and it decreases when the stock price goes down right and uh, so this is not the negative but so now what we have to do is so we can say that buying a call and selling the put is equal to buy stock at price k right now suppose the actual price of the stock is not k but is s so then you have to pay the difference so that means the c minus p will be equal to s minus k so let me give you an example so suppose uh, the stock is dollar 12 and k is dollar 10 so if you buy call and sell put at uh, strike price k then that is equal to that you are buying the stock at value 10 but actual value is 2 12 so you have to pay 2 dollars here so your c minus p should be equal to 2 dollars now we can add more complexity to this equation but this is called uh, call put parity but this is more simplified version we can add complexity here so how do we add complexity so now suppose the stock give you the dividend right but here you are not buying the stock but you are buying the call and uh, selling the put and you are uh, making it uh, looks like that you bought a stock so but you lose the dividend so in this case you will say s minus dividend whatever dividend you paid uh, during the uh, paid by the stock during the uh, time you held this combination and then uh, because uh, you are also doing one more thing is that instead of paying the price k or price for the stock right now you are paying the price much later so that means you are 
in a way gaining the interest on this value k so you understand like you know that uh, if you do this uh, buy this call sell this put then you are all all you are investing is around two dollars right and then you are delaying the payment of ten dollars uh, until the expiry so you will pay ten dollars uh, much later so in a way you gain the interest on it so in this case we'll say k minus interest so that will be your more uh, right way to write a call put parity but now let's uh, write it in a, uh, in a more uh, professional way so here it will be s e minus minus r t where r is the interest rate and i'm assuming continuously compound continuous compounding and here it will be equal to okay oh no this is the dividend rate sorry uh, this will be the dividend rate so we write uh, dividend here and uh, here it will be e minus rt where r is the interest rate so gamma is dividend rate and uh, r is equal to interest rate so i hope this will explain you the basic concept and we can also use the call put parity to build synthetic call or synthetic put options and we can talk about that later uh, in the next tutorial so thank you Uh, hello everyone in this small video tutorial we will uh, talk about how to calculate the net present value and internal rate of return uh, using the excel sheet so we know that there are inbuilt programs or commands to calculate the uh, net present value and uh, internal rate of returns but we will not be using it but uh, rather make our own uh, worksheet uh, this will help you understand the concept and also will allow you to the customization uh, if you need uh, some uh, answers to the problem which are not uh, bit, uh, straightforward but require some complexity so for example now starts so suppose we have a rate of return which is uh, 10% and we have a uh, year 1 2 uh, year 2 3 4 and five so we have five years and we have a retain a return uh, cash flow of hundred dollars in each of these five years so uh, each of, so one year means that we are getting a hundred dollar after end of one year right so let me center this so now if you want to calculate the present value of the first cash flow so what I'll do so I'll say uh, present value here so that will be equal to hundred dollars divided by one plus r where r is the rate of return so i'll say one plus ten divided by hundred right so uh why did i divide it by hundred because i want to convert the rate of return into the decimal places and then i'll also uh, power the one plus r with the number of years so now you can see that I'm getting 90.9091 so um, so if I repeat it for the next cell so you can see that again uh, I have uh, 100 divided by 1 plus R raised to power 2 because it's it is the cash flow after the two years so I can drag the same cell up to the five years and you can see that the value of hundred dollars which we receive after five years is much lower than the value of hundred dollars which we receive after one year so if we sum all of them together so we can say uh, npv net present value is equal to sum of all these numbers together so this is your net present value so as now we can check whether we did this calculation correctly or not so let's assume that the rate of return is zero so what will happen if the rate of return is zero so in this case 
all the hundred dollars will remain hundred dollars so then so if there is no interest on the money then even if i um, get a money now or after five years it's the same thing so then the net present value should be five hundred dollars so you can see that if i put it zero then all the uh, future cash flows are equal to 100 and the net present value is equal to 500 right so this is uh, how you calculate the net present value so now again if the interest rate is very high then in net present value will decrease and if it's very low then the net present value will increase so um, the more the interest rate uh, better is that your money uh, is come to you earlier if it comes late then it value will decrease however if there is no interest rate then it does not matter when the cash flow is coming so uh, this program is pretty much uh, uh, comes customizable you can also put negative values here so you can see a negative cash flow or you can uh, put zero here or not put anything here uh, like you can remove these things and i can calculate the net present value still so this is how you calculate the net present value now let's go to irr so now we have to calculate the uh, internal rate of return so what have what is in internal rate of return internal rate of return is that suppose uh, you invest money today and you get a cash flow in the future so uh, based on that cash flow you have to estimate how much uh, rate uh, of uh, return did you get on your investment so suppose your current investment uh, is three hundred dollars and your uh, you are getting hundred dollars for five years so now you want to calculate that how much money did you make um, or how much uh, rate of return did you get if you invested three hundred dollars now and you get hundred dollars for next five years then how will i calculate that so in this case uh, what i'll do is i'll use a goal seek command i can do another program but uh, i just wanted to use this sheet here so what we'll do is so uh, so you can see that the net present value right now is one or uh, no is 485.343 because the rate of return is one so i need to bring this rate of return close enough that net present value is equal to 300 which is your initial investment so this is initial investment right so now suppose i bring it i make it 10 percent so it's 379 and i make it 15 percent and c35 so i make it 20 percent so it's very close to the 300 but still uh, if you want to uh, make it uh, calculate the exact value of uh, r then we can go uh, to something called uh, goal seek and when we so to to see the goal seek uh, in your excel we have to uh, go to the options and say add ins and then click on the solver pack solver add in and say uh, okay now again i'll go there and say options and say add ins solver add in and say go here yeah and then say analysis tool pack solver add in and say okay so when i do that then i'll get uh, something called goal seek uh, in the data tab so when i click goal seek the net will say ask me uh, set cell so I'll say set cell uh, net present value and then to what which value I'll say to 300 because 300 is my initial investment by changing cell uh, R and, and then I can say okay and it will give me the value as 19.85779 so 19.8575 is our internal rate of return again suppose my initial investment is four hundred dollars 
so how will i do it i'll again go to what if analysis say goal seek and say the set value of net present value and then to value of 400 which is our initial investment by changing the cell r and then i press ok so it will say that my internal rate of return return is now 7.93081 percent so this is how you can uh, program your own uh, net present value and internal rate of return using the excel sheet so i hope uh, this tutorial will help so i'll see you next time Uh, hi everyone in this tutorial we will talk uh, about the problem of annuities so there are many times that what happen is that we are getting a constant cash flow uh, for every month or maybe every year and we want to see how much uh, does it um, cost now or what is the value of that annuities now so for example uh, suppose we have a cash flow of hundred dollars every year so this is uh, the end of one year two year and we are getting a hundred dollars so so i'll say a hundred dollars and i keep dragging it and let's say it is for uh, 20 years so we are getting a hundred dollars uh, every uh, end of uh, every year for next 20 years and we want to calculate what is the value of this uh, uh, amount today so what will i do is uh, uh, i'll say that suppose the rate of return or rate of interest is uh, 0.1 which is uh, 10% so so here so what I'll do is I'll calculate the present value of each dollar amount so this was the cash flow and then we have a present value so present value will be equal to 100 divided by 1 plus R so I'll put a dollar sign here so that if I drag this cell down then uh, it will not change the r and then i take uh, the power with the year of uh, the payment so because for the first year it will be one and then for the second year it will change according so as you can see that the values are changing so we can drag it down and see that uh, the, the hundred dollars we will receive after 20 years will only be equivalent to 14 dollars we receive today right and uh, then we can calculate the total value so we can say net present value uh, is equal to uh, sum of all these values so this is our uh, again is equal to sum of all these values so as you can see so this is the net present value so when we change the interest rate like suppose from 0.1% to 0% then you can see that the net present value is equal to 2000 which is uh, that uh, uh, that's the value of $100 even after 20 years is equal to $100 so that's why the total sum is equal to uh, 20 hundreds so but when we have an interest rate then it goes down right so now uh, we can uh, further go about it and so make it something else so suppose now that uh, we want to give money to someone uh, and uh, he wants to pay you back in the installment so how much installment should you charge him so suppose uh, uh, you are giving someone uh, 0 0.1 uh, is the interest rate so which is 10% uh, interest rate and somebody borrows hundred dollars from you so let's say uh, money borrowed right So that is uh, equal to 1000 or let's say yeah let's say $1000 somebody borrows 1000 from you so how much uh, payment he should make you every year for uh, next 20 years so how will we go about it so what I'll do in this case is that uh, I'll uh, take go to the data tab and click on the goal seek so I'll say data tab what if analysis and goal seek so it says set cell so I'll say set cell net present value and then to value because the money borrowed is 
1000 and then I'll say by changing cell so I'll say cash flow and say okay so you can see that uh, now the net present value is equal to the money which was borrowed and then the cash flow should be 117.46 so the person should pay you 117.46 and now uh, let's assume let me uh, bring this uh, let me bring insert here and now suppose the person uh, wants more detail on the payment he's making so he wants to know that whenever he make a payment how much he is paying for interest and how much he is paying uh, for the uh, principal so how can we calculate it so what we can do is that at the end of one year he will be paying the interest on one thousand dollars right and the interest rate is one percent or ten percent so we'll calculate the interest as is equal to principal into the interest rate so that is your uh, hundred dollars but he's making a payment of 117 so principal paid will be equal to uh, cash flow minus the interest payment so that is equal to 17.45 dollars so he only paid a uh, principal of 17.4596 dollars so what will happen next year so next year the principal left will be equal to money borrowed minus principal paid right and I'm putting a dollar sign on the uh, so let's do it this way so now this is the principal left so next year what will happen I'm again uh, paying the interest but this time the interest will be on the principal left right so I'll say principal left into the interest rate and the interest rate for interest rate I'll put a dollar sign so that when I drag this cell down then it does not change and you can see now this time the interest will be lower because the principal is lower and then the principal paid will be higher because the interest which is paying is lower and now so what will the principal left principal left will be equal to principal left last time minus the more principal which was paid so that will be equal to 963 now so now we can keep dragging this down and see how does it changes so you can see that we get uh, the money uh, flow so you can see that the interest payment the interest which has been paid is going down the principal left is also going down and the principal paid every time is also going up so uh, we can um, see that the end of uh, uh, 20 years he will be paying $10 as interest and 106 as the principal so the interest amount is very low and it will leave him with a zero balance so here it is giving 1.7 to 10 to minus 13 which is zero but because it's excel so it calculates to the uh, way long decimal point so it should be uh, zero so this is how you calculate so you can do this calculation easily in the excel sheet and give it to the borrower uh, or even if you borrow money from someone you can do the calculation and see how does uh, the cash flow will look like or how does your payment uh, works when you make uh, a loan or, or you pay a loan so i hope this uh, tutorial will help i'll see you later thanks